Welcome, neighbor. My name is Samuel Anson. Will you take a walk with me? During our time together, my prayer is that we can step out of our shoes and make an exchange where I walk inside of your shoes and you walk inside of mine. If you don't have any shoes, that is cool too. I still want to walk along with you. As for me, I love films and talking about the films that I watch. There are countless dimensions at play when we reflect in films. So I thought it would be great to start off this gathering by reflecting in films, making sense of mystery. And that is exactly what we will discover as a community in this next episode. The film reflects on the question, what is the meaning of life? What is life's purpose? And how are we being called to embrace all of that? I think you all would greatly appreciate today's episode as we reflect with the immense amount of questions and multi links that gives us, the viewers, the amount to ponder on. So today, I have an amazing friend of mine, amazing guest, Jeremy Bowles. He lives in Texas, a special ed teacher. And um, I appreciate him for it because I was shocked personally when I heard that this is the route that he took. This is a man that came to Grace University, just highly academic. And for you to be able to take this route, I, I relate to him in that sense. So if you hear a little bit of my story, but today's not about me. Today's about Jeremy Bose. Jeremy, what do you have for us today? Well, we're going to talk about one of Samuel's favorite movies. He's mentioned it over and over and over again. <laughs> so I guess we figured that it's about time that he gets to actually talk about mm -hmm. it. So we're going to mm -hmm. talk about Wally. -E. Here's the question that I wanted to start with, Samuel. Uh, what are the main reasons you cherish this movie? Like, why do you love this movie so much? Now, I'll, I'll give my my answers too, but I want to hear from you. Why do you think you love Wally so much? Mm, that's a really good question. I'm supposed to be asking you these questions, but for you to turn around and ask me, I appreciate it. Thank you. First of all, it's Pixar and it's animation. Growing up, I always thought that animations didn't really make sense. But then the more I started making time for animations, it made it more meaningful for me to take symbolisms serious because a lot of these cartoons have symbolic narratives behind them. I fell in love with it because of the fact that there was a sense of care that this robot appreciated. That's really why I find myself in tune with Wally. Uh, I'll say some things that that's that make this movie stand out. I am unlike you. I always liked cartoons. Like they haven't, they haven't left me even in adulthood. Like that's I still really like, like all those Disney movies and um, the nostalgia and just the art behind it. Hmm. Um, I got my teaching endorsements in hmm. at, at school. Was I got my teaching endorsements in special ed, but I also got my teaching endorsements in art. So that's another thing that I can teach. The visuals in this movie are just beautiful. They always are in Pixar. Like Pixar is just kind of like the gold standard for animation. Something that makes this movie stand out even today, 13 years later, because this came out in 2008. Somehow you are connecting to this little robot, right? You're connecting to the emotions in it. I will boldly make the claim that Wally is probably one of the best love stories, like one of the best like romance movies. This love story between Wally and and Eve, I love it. Like I'm just I'm, I'm smiling like the whole time I watch the movie. I'm a sucker for just uh, like 
romance and like I feel we could call them like hopeless hopeless romantics but I would say that they would actually be very hopeful like they, those are films that I can always appreciate something else that I really like about Wally is just he's got a real amazing sense of wonder hmm. he's spending so much time just just looking at things like soaking it in and it's just like little things what are they called the paddle paddle ball or whatever like the little uh ball that's on the string true like he's just like amazed by these things or he's like looking at this plant or or he's looking at his his future girlfriend Eve, right or he's looking at the stars like he loves life like he loves life and that that's it's just kind of inspiring to see that and it's really easy to connect with that hmm. um like you said i find myself connecting with this little robot and th- what, what a cool concept that is that this little robot that's supposed to take place in the future is teaching us about humanity another thing i like about it is like how many other cockroaches like can you ever say that you love like this movie somehow made a cockroach like really lovable and like cute like i don't want to like squish it and so like that's that's a testament to like oh, that's that's an impressive movie to make me care about a cockroach and the well-being of a cockroach thumbs up thumbs up like that's you get some major props for for being able to do that so any any other comments that you got uh, anything just oh yeah i really love this about this this movie the visual aid that you've shown so far is very impressive like just me watching it right now i can envision myself in the film already <laughs> the the ones that you showed before like yeah that one right there like what an interesting story for for us to talk about connection and then we are like actually seeing wally and eve holding hands <laughs> and just gazing in front of like the horizon like it's such a special moment like even the colors itself like christmas right like talk about symbolism right there that's that's what i i, I noticed and then uh, wally imagining the universe like i probably might wonder maybe wally wally was thinking about terms like this place is horrific <laughs> all this garbage around here where is people what what is my yeah, mission like on the on an outside like on a superficial uh, official like view of it like on the surface like it's you look at the earth it, that's depicted in wally and it's just like just garbage like towers of garbage and he's the one building these these towers all these by towers. himself yeah everything's red everything's just bad except i don't think he hates it Mm-mm. like because he he's just there doing his job and he's just doing his thing and he's finding all these things that that like he's passionate about that he loves like he like his musical uh, there's a um, the movie hello dolly like he plays that song when he's working and he watches it when he's at home there's he finds these little things that inspire him despite hmm. <laughs> despite all that and yeah. so i think there's that that's that's inspiring about this movie is he's he's finding the the value when in life and is kind of doing this the uh, this soul searching as well but mm-hmm. he's finding the value in life in these tiny little things as well it's amazing what pixar does as they uh they try really hard to make movies that teach us that are that are very human with characters that aren't human like one of the only movies that like they've got coco and they've got the incredibles but everything else is like fish or bugs or toys like things that aren't people but yet somehow they're so easy to connect to seriously so so easy to connect to uh, yeah this is this is amazing <laughs> microscope <laughs> yep 
Yeah, no, so a detail in Wally that I really love, uh, that I was really appreciative of when I was watching it, is they spent so much like time just working on his eyes, like mm -hmm. um, just his observation of the world. Like they they put like you can see the reflection in the reflection in the reflection. Like mm -hmm. they spent a lot of work to just show to give him these emotions because like that's a challenge. Like this is. How do you read the emotions off of this robot? It's not a person. Exactly. But here we are. We're doing it. Well, here's here's some some more art that I saw that looked pretty cool. I think Sweet. this one's like an official one. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, uh, so I just wanted to to kind of wanted us to kind of like brainstorm and think about like what are some of the main themes in Wally? -E? Like what what is this movie about? Hmm. And it, like they can be at like the level of just like the obvious themes and like what they would be listed as like if you were telling somebody about it and then just deeper themes if you've got any connections that that you can think of all so, right but what are some themes that that you feel are the main parts about wally things that that you notice i think about chaos i don't know if you connect with that yeah what do you mean well like with chaos it, it's just like how in Wally there is this unappreciative costume of him like I can only imagine people like judging him and like all of the way that Wally might go through like all of the ways of like trauma the chaos that that kind of misjudgment might uh, might cause Wally to reflect on just the outer appearance, it's just that personal aspect of who Wally is. What are you doing I, here? <laughs> yeah, I said Wally is probably one of the greatest love stories of all time. Um, okay, and I'm like, and I challenge somebody to find me a better love story. Or more meaningful love story, or more pure uh, love story, a pure, more pure type of love than Wally. So, like, a theme for Wally would just be about love and what love looks like and what love means. I think that's one of the themes in it. <laughs> Based on off what you said, like, like he, he's an outcast, yeah. and like when he's on the the fancy ship when things get on and he's over with with mankind again like he's he does not belong there and like when people see them see him they're like what and like there's <laughs> robots out to get him and remove him because he does not belong he's an outcast and then he becomes friends of all these other robots that are all broken mm -hmm. he kind of <laughs> helps they're him. all broken yes they're all broken but they all serve a purpose like they Seriously. all make it through and <laughs> and help help uh, save the day. I mean, and I think this one's this one's an obvious one to, to anybody who's, yeah. who watches it. But just like just the importance of of the environment, taking care of it, mm. and um, seeing value in it. Like that's that's definitely a big theme. Like like this one is like Wally is probably something that they show like on Earth Day. Like if mm. like if a teacher was showing a movie. Earth Day, they might show Wally. Like that would be a choice because, like, there's these obvious, like it's like it hits you in the head real easily with like the corporate attitude and like all the like the corporations are like what runs humanity at the point. Right. It's, it's called uh, by and large, and it's kind of supposed hmm. to be like their their Walmart or their Amazon, and like they're in charge like instead of the president of the united states it's like president of by and large is the one who's like making these decisions and stuff hmm. um, and they just leave earth because it's too dirty because we mistreated it right it's and so they're like they leave it and they go to paradise uh in this and with the idea that they'll that the wallies are going to clean up earth and it'll be ready for them to they get back but oh wow yeah they do that for over 700 years 
like they're over they're in the ship for over 700 years and they don't even remember true being over there oh man that's that's a good one the the idea of like being able to embody um all of the messiness of earth and playing your part in taking care of that stuff i like that even like the one the picture that you're showing right now there's this this character right here Uh, like it looks like a a captain (laughs) oh yeah yeah (laughs) <laughs> with like soda or something in his hands so like yeah. I, so talking yeah, about the environment like what I'm t- what I'm thinking about right now is like consumption really that's like over consumption that can easily lead me to make some sort of harsh judgment about that character so I don't want to like I want to be careful I don't want to fall into the trap <laughs> oh no no that's that's exactly what they they want you to get into because like, oh really they say like the the people once they like all of them are just on a chair and their bones their bones are smaller or something like because they don't they don't ever walk they're just on the chair the whole time they okay. haven't walked for hundreds of years and they're just looking at screens like they have like they have images or like there's parts of the movie where they're like be two people talking to each other Hmm. They're they're sitting on chairs next to each other on their little paths, but they're talking to each other on the screen, and, oh. and like, and yeah, it's all about like consumerism and just like I see all that, and then the the shortcomings of that, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Hmm. No, the captain is the one. You need to rewatch it again. You got to get the refresher. He's the one that he. He gets shown the plant and then he gets all into um the idea of earth and just Mm. like he's like oh my gosh it's that was so cool like we gotta get back there and he has to fight with the wheel i don't know if you remember like the wheel that's like the it's like the computer that's controlling the thing that Mm -hmm. wants them to stay on the ship Mm -hmm. um he has to go out his way to help get that plant in and take over the computer system to get him back yeah i i, I need to watch it's been a while since i've seen it for real well there you I go didn't watch it Plus, it's on there i watched it on monday on disney i i would take a look at it i don't remember if the plant grew out of a shoe yeah it did they you just found it like in a refrigerator like that was oh. what that's why eve was there okay they sent eve she's like a probe like they send a bunch of those robots out to different planets and they're just or maybe just earth but Hmm. their whole responsibility is just to look for signs of life returning Mm -hmm. to earth Mm -hmm. and once once wally wally gives her this plant because he he sees like in his little movie he sees a boy give uh give some flowers to the girl in his love story that he loves Mm -hmm. to watch all the time Mm -hmm. so he gives this plant and then it it creates like her programming like turns like gets it and then she like shuts down and then like a ship comes to bring her again like her whole responsibility was to bring that plant like that was her mission what okay i knew the plant is very important the plant is life it represents life oh yeah and then they have to get that plant in some little hole and then it'll get the computer system to start this new mission of going back to earth Hmm. and all the robots on the ship except for the outcasts are trying to stop uh wally and everybody from putting the plant in it yeah there is a little bit of everything in this film to be honest <laughs> a little bit of everything i even see a rubik's cube <laughs> oh yeah that's one of his his earthly treasures he's telling you he was inspired by a lot of things he didn't hate being on earth yeah i think he hated being lonely though I, I can only imagine like whether if Wally was reflecting on the idea of isolation in terms of like you know what I might be lonely but I still feel like there's a sense of presence around me right because I can move I can I can still see there's something transcendent about the fact that I'm still here but at the same time too you need other other connections and I don't see any of these other connections 
that have abandoned the earth so like isolation is not as isolation but at the same time there's some sort of deep isolation yeah definitely he definitely was content with his purpose he wasn't mm-hmm. hating his life true um he wasn't not doing his job he's doing his job and he was finding treasures and doing things but he was always like they made it very obvious in the first 30 or 40 minutes that right he was looking for more and he was looking for uh he was looking for love he was looking for something beyond just that regular purpose that was programmed into him um he had a natural desire to to love and to be loved that's good now how can we try to connect wally to what you've what you've been talking about and these um made this cheap little <laughs> ate it with this picture you gonna but, go there yeah no i want to see how can we connect wally um I want to see if you see any themes that connect uh, with with the with the things that you've been talking about with Christianity or spirituality or anything like that. Hmm. Like what themes? And I, we've kind of already talked a little bit about those themes. Yeah. Um, with the, the previous slide, but hmm. how does it remind you of of some of the important themes? That, that you usually talk about. Mm. Hmm. Well, like, obviously, you have been, like, attending my Zoom meetings, Bible studies on Revelations, right? And the way that I've been, like, blessed with all of these, all the biblical scholars say, I mean, this damn Revelations is awesome. And I really appreciate I don't take that for granted at all. Um, one theme that I came across when I was reflecting on the commentaries was the idea that revelations can easily embody cartoon characters. The character of Christ can reflect a cartoon character. I used to write contextualization because like obviously Wally did not live in the Roman times. <laughs> you know what I mean? But Yes, the robot Wally did not live in it, but I think the narrative of Wally reminds you a lot of the themes of the mystery of revelations. Like a lot of kind of like what I and my and you have came across is like there is life, there is Eden, and Revelations is almost as if it is pointing us back to Eden um, and how we have abandoned it and how we have found ourselves becoming too smart by eating off the whatever it's apple or pomegranate <laughs> or you know like instead of embracing the tree of life we have embraced the tree of knowledge and we have become too smart right to the point that we have found ourselves not appreciating the little things that we were finding wally some of the things that i've learned from it i would just say one thing which is that um we are really being called to create a space where the holy spirit can enter right so we're not consuming the space is saying that this is my space. You don't belong here. Because once the Holy Spirit enters, no one has control anymore, <laughs> right? And once the Holy Spirit is part of this space that we are all part of, we can all hopefully have the ability to say, what can I contribute to this space? Uh, what, how can I be a participant in this space? And I think that's, that's really what religiously i'm seeing wally <laughs> i don't know if that makes any sense yeah no yeah i see what you mean as far as like it being like a characterization and like uh revelations some of these things that it's talking about these creatures and different characters are are care could 
could be characterizations. They can be interpreted as characterizations mm. because characters, even out of this world characters like Wally or like a dragon or something, mm-hmm. can help us can help us uh, bring themes with narrative, right? In the form mm-hmm. of stories, storytelling is one of the most like oldest things is it's one of the things that makes us human right that sets us apart is we um are able to tell stories to end is we don't just tell absolute truth but we tell truth and make it more palatable make it more easier to understand or more exciting or different things through outrageous characters every once in a while yeah. Um, man now, that's a that's a good question like um that 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 yeah that was that was a good question because like the last thing too that i mean i'm even thinking about is like when i think about the idea of wrath right um in revelations that we've been covering or like i'm sure other religious spaces may have different similarities and of how they view wrath but like in revelation itself like it almost appears to me that like the way that i have been spending time reflecting on it that the wrath of god really boils down to how much are we as humans willing to make a difference if you create hate if you create greed that in itself can create a sense of wrath in life right horribly right if you destroy the earth that in itself can create a sense of wrath so like i think that's the message that i'm even getting getting from wally it's like it's not so much as like God is the one who is creating this wrath. It is so much about, like, I think at least, how we have missed the nature of love, right? And how we are turned against it. And when we do, like, the wrath is really coming out of us. Um, what we have done to not take care of this, of this earth. Um, um, so to speak, I think. You want to say something? Yeah, yeah. No, I I liked what uh, what you were talking about. Um, I really liked something that you said about um, turning away from the nature of love, like the turning away from the nature of loving. Like hmm. you you said something about along the lines of that, and I want to touch on that in a little bit as I kind of go over some of the way I connect uh, my my spiritual philosophy and my mm-hmm. my understanding and of of Christianity and the things that I really connect with uh, mm. to to this movie and to to that um, but I was I was like looking up some different things about it like i was kind of surprised i guess maybe not that surprised because i know it's like a beloved movie like people like really like this movie it's got uh it's tied for the highest rated pixar movie Hmm. 95 actually Hmm. no i think that's wrong i think the original toy story has like a 96 Hmm. but uh 95 out of 100 on metacritic which is that is good super super good <laughs> it's very hard to get in even in the 90s um so yeah this is a very well-loved movie and so i knew there would probably be a lot of people saying uh different things about it but um yeah like this movie is like recommended on like like it's on like lists for like spiritual movies and stuff and um there's a lot of different theories and uh things that people see connection with one i did want to talk about one one theory that i saw that was just kind of entertaining to me um it's not something that i take very seriously um i i think it's more funny than than uh serious but and it's just kind of 
uh, jesting at, but it, it is kind of weird, like some of the connections in it. So like, I get why why the theory has has made its rounds, and like, there's there's been a lot of people who have shared this before. But um, uh, I watched uh, there's this YouTuber that I like that makes a bunch of like he's called he does like the, this thing called like film theory and food hmm. theory and game theory. He just his whole show is just about like diving deep into like these theories so either in movies film or food um and he does one about wally and here here's his here's the theory that he goes after it's crazy back in 2017 a reddit user by the name vexelius had a wild idea what if wally the robot was satan and the whole space opera was a retelling of the biblical story of humanity's downfall in the garden of eden now i know what you're thinking that sounds insane right i've been doing this a long time and i have a general sense of what makes a plausible theory from a uh, bat guano crazy one most of the time at least like seriously where would anyone even begin to get an idea like this? Well, consider the following. The biblical story of the Garden of Eden basically boils down to a woman named Eve getting tricked by Satan to deliver the apple of enlightenment to man. This results in humanity unlocking godlike knowledge, like some sort of DLC patch. God gets mad that suddenly everyone's embarrassed by their fig leaf attire and throws them out of paradise, dooming mankind to a lifetime of misery and hard labor. To quote from Genesis 3.18, Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Did not make this theory. It was some theory that that appeared on Reddit like years ago. Mm. But he kind of like dives deep into it in this YouTube video uh, about how Wally is is like Lucifer, like uh. like the serpent form of Lucifer. Like you talked about like Eden. You you found like connections like going back to Eden and different things. Yeah, um, return, return back to Earth. <laughs> and I think that's more in the lines of how I see it, but. So in a very basic form, the creation story in the Garden of Eden, we have these two people, right? Adam and Eve. Hmm. And there's a seedling that provides a lot of knowledge that is um, that changes everything. Then takes them, it creates a fall from paradise. They leave paradise because of that, right? That's a very basic sense of it. Hmm. And I'm kind of using choice words on purpose to fit this theory but would you agree like in a basic sense that's the creation story you got these two people adam and eve this seedling is given to eve and she takes it and that creates a fall from paradise right is that um is that fair? did you say seed seed i'm saying seedling yes uh, apples have seeds right it's a if you plant an apple it could right. create a tree right yeah so yeah, I'm being very choice specific with that. Hmm. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like the Book of Genesis, I I tend to read that more of like metaphoric. Uh, yes, and I think that is a very very correct way to do it. But mm -hmm. um, I mean, who knows? The serpent can symbolize some sort of negative seed mm -hmm. you know what i mean that like our words can be or can be fruits like if you produce good fruits in people you will see that and if you don't you will see that so maybe that kind of manipulation can be its own form of seed that eve found i don't know herself buying into <laughs> Yeah, I think that's pretty interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna steer us back into into this direction that I was going for. So uh, we got these two characters, Adam and Eve. Eve is given a seedling. They fall from paradise, right? It changes right. everything. Um, Wally gives a literal seedling, gives a plant, a small sprout, to a character named Eve. A right. girl that that he falls in love with, right? Mm. Um, well, it, it seems like it's a weird coincidence that her name is Eve. Anyways, true. Uh, he gives this this plant to her, and then uh, she once once she takes this plant, she has to she brings it back to to the ship, the spaceship that they're on, and 
once once like once the she brings this plant it starts the spiral downward because the humans eventually decide to leave this paradise that they're on this ship on because they're in paradise they don't have to work they don't have to even fight with anybody they don't they're just sitting around everything's provided for them they've got all the food that they want they they have all the entertainment they want they're in technically paradise right that that some people could represent that as paradise and they bring this this plant Eve is given this plant and then it changes everything upside down mm. um and they return back to earth to this dump of an earth and they get to work the end credits and everything is them working and bringing back bringing back life on earth mm-hmm. um and so like and they go more into depth and there I'm not going real too deep into this theory but it is kind of weird the some of the connections with that and so like they they like oh Wally's the devil or Wally's Adam or whatever like um and has brings this downfall to humanity because they were here they were in paradise but now they now they have to work now they have to do all this stuff now there's going to be conflict again um i don't i don't really um have the same outlook on that but it is an interesting uh interesting parallel to be honest like i all i can really think about is here is this man or whoever is behind this theory right here is this person who is finding finding it hard to make sense of humanity so therefore they create this dark reality of this film that will in the long run persuade people not to watch it i think it mostly was starting as as kind of a joke and they found enough weird connections and and there's some right. weird connections that they oh, okay. find as he dives deep into it the guy who makes this youtube video ends up saying like well i don't it makes more sense that uh wally is like jesus or somebody because they they find that that the paradise the the ship that they're on it, it really is in paradise it has a lot of problems it's probably more of a hell actually disguised as a paradise and they leave that and come back and create work on creating an eden right work on come back to their earth and and, and creating this garden and bringing back life to to earth. oh really yeah he goes into that also i just wanted to bring that up since we were like finding ways to connect it to to christian themes like mm-hmm. I, those are out there like there's some weird ones out there that are kind of entertaining mm-hmm. um and yeah there's some weird coincidences mm-hmm. um, but more of what i see and, and i'm getting back to what you said about how there was there was a disconnect with the nature of love like humanity lost its connection with with what love is and it lost its connection with with its with our home with our earth and with nature and different things in this movie and they treat it badly while they're still on earth and they turn it into a dump which is we see we see a lot of we feel a lot of connections with that because we see it it's kind of an extreme example but it's it's you look at Wally and you look at what are what we do on earth right now and it's like okay yeah there i can see how this is like a possible reality like it's not like too outlandish like i saw a meme a couple days ago it was actually on the day i watched Wally i saw a random meme about Wally it is a weird coincidence it said Wally came out today 13 years ago <laughs> i watched it on the day it came out i guess Wally came out today 13 years ago and you guys still aren't recycling. <laughs> um so uh I thought that was pretty funny but in a sad way but um it you said 
the disconnect from the nature of love like that really is a big big theme i loved your words with it because it really kind of helped shape my i have something i had this theme in mind but i like i'm going to use your words to shape it um go ahead this the the people are they are in paradise but they have lost connection with reality yeah. and lost connections with themselves and once Wally gets there like he interacts with two people and kind of brings them back to reality like takes them away from their screen and those people after they meet Wally like they Wally's not with them very often anymore but then they they kind of it all comes back to them like they start getting in touch with their humanity again like they're interacting with each other like they're over there using a pool and they say the comment like oh we had a pool and they were just always like rolling around in their flying chairs looking at their screens they never knew that they had a pool and they're just over there having genuine conversation and like laughing with each other and playing with each other um and being human again mm-hmm. and uh they and uh loving right showing each other love and so like what i said before with where like the theme that really speaks to me when i when i'm like boldly kind of claim that this is the best love story that is on film like the, you can't beat this one it's not a like it's not like a passionate or like desirous love like this is like a fantastic example of just pure love like mm-hmm. this connection with eve like they they're not like oh like oh she's so hot or whatever like it's just like he just genuinely like you you are seeing examples of just what it means to care for somebody what it means to sacrifice for somebody what it means like uh what it seeing just like genuine interest and excitement in somebody's presence um and being uh, like he just wants to like a big central plot of this is he just wants to hold her hand so badly like that's what he wants he wants to hold her hand and when he finally gets to do that it's a big moment in the movie um that and that's so innocent and pure but it's just like that's such a a realistic and just beautiful um reminder of real love um and he also it also just shows a love for humanity and a love for nature and a love for creation and and things that people have made like like we don't think about a paddle ball like we don't think anything special about a paddle ball but somebody a lot like if we're we're standing on shoulders of of giants like somebody figured out how to t- put wood together like that and somebody figured yes. out how to create a tool to cut it in that shape and somebody cr- figured out how to tr- create a rubber string and somebody who create figured out how to create a ball and then somebody figured out how to turn it all into some little game and we don't think anything of it we see it at the dollar store and we're just like oh that's trash that's trash yeah exactly but Whoa. Wally loves it and so yeah. like that that showing that and uh seeing reminders of that and just like that's how that's that's why I like about um going to church and just my connection with uh spirituality mm-hmm. is it's often just a it's a good reminder it's a good time to sit down and reflect and meditate and connect with with the appreciation of just life and um and all that so yeah that's that's how i connect it like the christianity and just spirituality in general for me it's it, it everything goes through love in it like you can't talk about it without love for those things like like i said like people relationship humanity life create like the creation of things like that's what god is to me hmm. just all that so having wally being such an appreciative soul of all the life around him that's very spiritual to me and that's that's something that i think we strive for a lot and fall short of but i think 
I think, and then I think that's the one of the main missions of Christianity is like if you can live your life like that, you're doing it, hmm. right? You you're living like Jesus, like um, loving in that way. I agree. To be honest, if I if I can just pick high on some on some themes that you have reflected on just just now, like and just remind me of um, one quote that I came across the other day from this philosopher named like Hippocrates and like he says something like before you heal someone ask them if they're willing to give up on the things that made them sick and when I reflect on that quote a lot of what you're reminding me of is exactly that which is we are not willing in this world to let go on the things that makes us sick it doesn't necessarily has to be things that we love like oh i i love this food and for some reason in that food there was this dirt that landed in it when i think about personally the things that makes us sick right is we as humans have taken the things for granted like politically we have found ourselves engaging so much with our favorite politicians or our favorite presidents or our favorite countries right um our our favorite policies and a lot of time when we find ourselves favoritizing these these things i wonder if they can lead us into some sort of traumatic drama that we will not be able or prepared to deal with you know what i mean and then like also aside from politics like we're talking about like taking care of just the simple reality of the diseases of life um like for example pollution or how we pollute the world um how much we travel with vehicles for instance and is, is could there be a time where we probably might have to limit that amount of traveling so we can stay more cl- um, locally with the, the communities around us is like even like yesterday i was like sharing um this article about how we consume lots of water or waste lots of water and then one thing that came across was that it's hardly impossible for people to waste water but when they use that term um i just came across that like electricity produces water especially in local areas and then like so if we don't consume a lot of water meaninglessly right then who knows we might be able to like not find ourselves paying so many bills because it is electricity it's not so much that the water is going to go to waste there's always going to be enough water because i think there's some sort of like seven percent of water (laughs) that percentage that people use on this earth but it's like like i don't know the connection between electricity and water you might probably expand on that so it's just the idea of like rethinking on how to navigate in this world so well so like whenever we go for some sort of healing or some sort of love or you know present ourselves before god like moses did at the burning bush are we are we willing to let go of like contribute to letting go of the things that are putting us in these situations that God doesn't want us to be in the first place. And you and last thing too that I want to say too is like you mentioned like the dollar store, right? Or used cars or used items that we tend to not want much. Um where have we as humanity like gone to like just although like yes the the car is old or this tour is two dollars but where do we get this quick sense of 
oh that's horrible or like we haven't even given it a chance <laughs> like just completely like oh that's horrible <laughs> you know what i mean kind of like what you just brought up um but like it, we, we have just missed um the reality of the power of appreciation i don't know it, it can be a little sad it can be a little sad yeah yeah i think this this movie definitely brings up uh if you're paying attention to it it being it brings up questions in your mind of what do i value mm -hmm. and what should i be valuing mm -hmm. right like there's a scene in it where wally finds like an engagement ring like he opens up like a little case and he finds like a like a diamond like a big diamond engagement ring and he takes the 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 ring and he throws it away he throws it away and he takes the box because he's so like interested in the box wow um, he's putting value in that he doesn't he didn't see any value in the ring he's just like oh whatever <laughs> that one's trash but <laughs> this cool thing opens opens up and down like um and so like like you're saying like oh what are we putting value in and uh water like our environment is something that doesn't get enough value put into it right mm -hmm. um like i saw i saw a meme uh a little while ago i saw somebody respond like there was like a tweet that elon musk sent out i don't know like months ago that was like hundred million dollars to whoever um creates uh some to the next young scientist who creates uh something that will help uh purify our air or whatever i i don't i don't i'm butchering this but um something along the lines of that and the meme was like wow whoever invented trees is gonna be rich um and it's just like so things that are just so basic and there's our innate parts of our world like we don't we don't put enough value in them and we don't we don't spend enough time being mindful about them we are just like oh it's just a tree but like there's like if you really just think about it like it's just so amazing like all the different components and all the different things and just the fact that it exists in the first place it's yo so there's crazy. there's hospital there's hospital in that box like there's there's therapy in that box like you open this box even you talking about you start like there's a smile in your face like just while you're opening this box and <laughs> uh, like and opens it like you're smiling but you you the fact that you're able to laugh there's a sense of healing already the sense that you find this that kind of humor just opening this box like there's a sense of the restoration like this all oh, this disconnection from all of this depression that you're going through you just you just sense this sense of awe it's important it's important <laughs> to do that to be in awe of life and creation mm -hmm. it's, it's mm -hmm. very humbling it's very inspiring mm -hmm. um all right so here's here's a picture from the movie like the the credits credits are really interesting as somebody who uh could be an art teacher or whatever like and did art in college and stuff it, it was very just neat open uh wow. credits um because what they do is like once they they get back to earth and then it just ends um and then they show like a series of different pictures and it starts off with like cave drawings mm -hmm. and then it goes to like what? egyptian egyptian drawings and then it goes to, like it goes through ages of different art styles and this is one of the ones this is supposed to kind of look like like in the style of like vincent van gogh um like different impressionalists um but and he's very popular artist well he's a lot of people's favorite favorite hmm. artists in, in in the united states um but i like this this picture a lot and we were like we were talking about just being in awe of creation and awe of life like here they are looking at a bird right 
in life is returning. So it's a little bit extra special. There aren't birds in the birds aren't as commonplace in Wally's Earth, mm-hmm. but they have a sense of appreciation. And what a world it would be if we could always just keep that sense of sense of wonder and appreciation like kids have, right? Seriously, a lot of people, a lot of people are like, "Oh, I love, I love." hanging out with kids because I love seeing the world through their eyes or whatever uh-huh. like because everything's so new to them and they've got so much question and then at some point people just kind of are just like yeah whatever it, like they become too complacent with it but anyways there's this picture and I wanted the this is the last thing that I've got a, uh, that I found but this is a quote from the director of Wally hmm. that was pretty good so he actually uses some of his Christian background in his uh, movies that, so, that he's made. So this is what he said. Oh, wow. What really interested me was the idea of the most human thing in the universe being a machine. Because it has more interest in finding out what the point of living is than actual people. Right? Than actual people do. Like sometimes we don't we don't we don't really care right we don't have that sense of of awe or at least sometimes we do but then we fall out of that like it becomes too easy to get complacent again and and he says the greatest commandment christ gave us is to love but that's not always our priority so i came up with this premise that could demonstrate what i was trying to say that irrational love defeats the world's programming mm. And so you've got these two robots that are trying to go above their basis directives. And so that and that's a big plot of the of the movie is like Eve Eve has this directive. She has this mission. She has to uh, put this plant in the thing. Like that's uh, what is important to her. But then like Wally is getting hurt at one point and like then she has this conflict of interest like yeah i have my my programming i have what i was built to do or what i think i'm supposed to be doing and then i have love i have i have wally over here and he needs my help right Mm -hmm. love can make us do irrational things and that's that's what he's kind of getting at that you got these two robots that are trying to go above their basis directives literally their programming to experience love right and we don't have programming as humans, but we think of like, we get into these cycles, we get into these forms of thinking and mm-hmm. whether, we, however we want to call it, like we we'll usually like here, we'll say like the American culture of thinking, right? Uh, it's very easy to be um, swayed to think a certain way or do certain actions right actions based off our culture of like what is and you say like well, why do we do this and it's just like well i don't know it's just what we do like um like we we're very work-minded in this culture um yeah. like one of the first questions you ask people when you meet them is like oh what do you do and we mean <laughs> what is your job what is your occupation <laughs> right that is a that's kind of a weird thing to ask people when you think about it but it's just like part of our culture of that's that's in our programming if we're robots like that's just what we're meant to like that's what we're trained to to think about and so there's a lot of messages of like well we talk about like oh the real world and um like i counsel and direct a bunch of like church camps for our church and the kids always talk about like, oh, it's very different than the real world. And they, what they mean is just like all the influences of their life and just the culture of, of that they live within, having a lot of influence on them. Um, and this movie kind of gives a good message, at least to me, gives a good message that love can break those barriers right love can push past that and that's what the main message of that jesus was bringing was he comes to a society that was starting to get real focused on uh how 
you're supposed to be good, right?、Mm-hmm. The how, the rules that you have to live by, and then he comes to push, like it's not so much about these how, it's just love people, right? You're getting、mm-hmm. you're getting so caught up in the rules that you're missing the point,、mm-hmm. right?、Mm-hmm. Get out of this programmed robot society like mentality of this is what I have to do, this is the way to do it, and just love, right? That's 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 what I get. That's a yeah. It's the big secret connection to to Christ's message that I get. That, and I don't know how much of it all was very intentional. It seems like some things were intentional with this director, but he obviously. To me, at least,、um, has this influence his his way his philosophy that he developed and was brought up with is this Christian philosophy, these Christian influences, and this these messages that、uh, have resonated with him about love. He's subconsciously, partly and consciously partly, putting these into just stories, entertaining. Stories for children, but actually just for everybody, right? The,、mm. It's not just kids that love Wally. Like, here's two grown adults talking about Wally for a past hour or whatever. <laughs> so,、mm. yeah, I wanted to share that quote with you because that that I I saw that quote. I was like, oh wow, that's so. Yes, this this is easier to connect to to some Christian themes than I thought. Because here you go. He's he had intention with it the whole time. Yeah, kind of like um, what is this Life of Pi?、It's、oh, a that's、Christian. a good movie. See, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a Christian film. Gosh, like the director. I And I don't、know. like I don't like calling them Christian films. I don't either. That that's true. I agree. That's very limiting to lots of other religions who, or people without religion who. Connect with the same sort of philosophy. I agree. Just, just love people, right? We, yeah. We, that's a human、yeah. thing. Yeah.、Uh, so I think maybe it's just best to call it like just a very human film, which is very、yeah. ironic since it's a movie about robots. But yeah, <laughs> that yeah. don't even like talk for like thirty minutes.、Mm-hmm. Um, but there are some definite Christian themes that resonate with me.、Mm-hmm. But. I'm not going to. I'm not going to use language that that does、the、not label. include other. Like I'm not saying it can't be other things as well. But the Christian theology that that resonates with me, I am seeing it in there, and I'm sure、yeah. other people can make those connections with、mm-hmm. uh, with other philosophies. Personally, I, I agree. I I wholeheartedly do. Like when I reflect on love, I. I I think about agape love, you know what I mean,、uh, redemptive love, a love, a kind of love that transcends a simple reality of、um, kissing someone goodbye or hugging someone. You know what I mean? Like, yes, filial love is powerful, erotic love is powerful, but. Is it possible to expand on that a little bit? You know, I think that's what the gap in love does. Is how far can you go? Are you willing to provide any kind of support for a stranger? Because I think even Wally, it wouldn't hurt for me to say that Wally represented the immigrant community,、um, an alien. So to yeah, speak. Yeah. No, he was unwanted. Well, first of all, what I also do is I also love to reflect on some questions. I know, like、yeah. time is taking a little bit, but I have this、um, Ecclesiastes、um, verse that I want to share with you, and then I have some questions I want to ask you before, like we end our session.、Right. Um, so. One thing too that I came across is, if you don't mind me、um, reflecting, is that、um, a while back, right? Is that I wonder if the film of Wally might also be a film about capitalism,、um, and also how the movie depicts 
the theme that is embedded in like perhaps the book of um, Ecclesiastes, which is everything that we achieve on earth, our knowledge of it is meaningless. Um, and if you can go back to that quote, so I came up with this premise that could demonstrate what I was trying to say that irrational love defeats the world's programming or um, irrational knowledge perhaps even defeats the world programming if irrational love defeats the world's programming then let's shift to I don't think that that's what Andrew Stanton is trying to convince people of just shift from irrational love to irrational love I don't think it means like irrational love like picking a girlfriend who really just is not right for you i think it irrational love is what jesus does all the time and that is just showing love showing a sense of value to all these people that society tells everybody else that they had no value they were worthless right mm. here he is spending time with with kids here he is spending the time with women. Here he is spending time with prostitutes. Here he is spending time with uh, tax collectors, right? People like people that their program, like the disciples who were there with him all the time, were like, "What are you doing?" What, like they, they feel like they just asked him that all the time. Like, "What are you doing, Jesus? What are you doing, Jesus?" Like hmm. every single time, and, and he's probably just thinking, "Like, gosh, how many times do I have to tell you guys?" Um, I think that's what irrational love is. Hmm. Um, it's going, going past what you think is like, like normal. Like oh, like oh, I don't want to. Like you see a woman on the bus crying, and you'd be like, oh, I don't want to bother her. I, I, I don't see. Make it creepy, or or you see a a uh, man who needs help and like oh, and you think oh somebody's coming i'm sure somebody's coming to help him or whatever and these are oh. things that would go go in my head i'm that i am 100 guilty huh. of yeah um, yeah yeah and irrational love is going past that rational form of thinking of oh i gotta take care of myself and going towards i'm not just thinking about myself anymore right that's mm -hmm. what rational rational is keeping yourself alive Mm -hmm. and doing what's best for you irrational mm -hmm. is changing that pyramid of you at the top and flipping it right yeah and putting everybody else above you at that point yeah and that's yeah. a challenge that's a challenge and i'm not saying that we're ever i don't know if i'm ever going to be capable of fully flipping that over but i try and i like to surround myself with movies and with stories like this that are inspiring to me that are like okay i am gonna i'm i'm, I'm really tired right now or i'm really busy but this person they put a lot of work into this i'm gonna show my support i'm gonna go and help them out or i'm gonna go and listen to what they say or i'm gonna <laughs> go and uh work with them or i'm gonna go <sighs> do that that's that's irrational type of love i don't think it's like i don't think it's a message of like choosing your partner like eve is a is a bad partner for wally i don't think that's the message of that i think it's wally's irrational quest of jumping on a spaceship holding on with his fingertips and getting like crunt like he almost dies like two times like in the movie like he like self-sacrificing um just to to save the world basically like because he has hope that there's a future that they can mm -hmm. bring life back to it um yeah and so i i think that's what he means by that and that that's good like playing a role like irrational love within the context of the of what it means to carry the cross so to speak right going yeah. beyond then ourselves doing what is um that is odd right becoming odd human beings ourselves so to speak that's that's awesome so like 
anyways just getting back to this ecclesiastes chapter one like it goes on to say some like well i'm just going to paraphrase it that everything that we achieve on earth and are now just meaningless that the search for wisdom pleasure and wealth and success are all meaningless yet we would rather chase after what is um meaningless um and not what is meaningful how do you think that we as humans might be able to appreciate what is meaningful yeah so so there are parts of that quote that and maybe i'm just not getting the full context but that i kind of disagree with but i agree with some of it like at a, at a different level but i i don't agree that everything on this earth we accomplish is meaningless i do think yeah. that it is meaningless if it's just you that accomplishes that like i read all these books mm -hmm. there's no meaning in that once you die there is meaning it is meaningful if i read all these books and i shared that knowledge with the people who are still there mm -hmm. right that's that carries on um, and I think that's what creates meaning is, and, and I feel like that's something that a lot of Christians and, and other religions and people who devote their lives to helping others is they find a lot of meaning in that, that sense of connection, that sense of helping others, uh, it gives a lot of people meaning. Hmm. And so, um, I think that that quote is really good in the sense of like yeah i i have all this knowledge or i accomplish all these things or i have all this money but i can't take that with me when i'm dead right, right? it's gone it's meaningless and i didn't make any connections i didn't do anything worthwhile that is going to make anybody remember my name or it's not going to make any impact on somebody else's life and them uh becoming better so yeah, in a sense, that is definitely meaningless. Um, but I think there's lots of things that we do that are meaningful. So maybe maybe I was missing that part of it. But uh, what do I find meaningful? I, I think I already kind of answered that. It's making making connections, sharing, helping others. Um, if if I'm doing something that makes somebody else, even if it's just one person, day better. Hmm. that's meaningful because yeah. i don't i don't know the impact of it it could be a small seedling but it can grow into a tree that could help others as well so yes that's kind of like how i have been able to reflect on ecclesiastes chapter one myself um like verses 12 through 18 or chapter two verse one through three and then chapter four sorry chapter two verse four through eleven all of these verses or like chapters like whenever i reflect on like what is meaningless like i think about knowledge and i think about wisdom i think about wealth right so the question i tend to ask myself is well i do have wealth but does wealth have two different meanings and if so how do i distinguish myself from um the meaningless reality of wealth and the meaningful reality of, of wealth right um and i think i find a lot of wealth and kind of like what you talk about making connections with people and like that's valuable to me than simply just becoming attached to actual currency per se and i think the same goes for pleasure and wisdom i find a lot of wisdom right like just have the conversation with you and l being able to sacrifice all of the wisdom that i have developed so i can hear what you're saying right if i can't sacrifice that then <laughs> that can be meaningless because at the end of the day it can result to idolatry <laughs> the idolatry of wisdom 
how do you think um one how do you think we might be able to speak of wally as a postmodern movie the other t- question too i want to ask you is how do you think music and sound editing give them structural shape like gives wally the film wally structural shape so yeah i i, I guess that it's definitely a a risky movie and it definitely uh tests uh test what what we might expect out of things like everything about it is is backwards right these are two robots who are the most human things in this movie in the galaxy in the universe right um this is a kids movie and it spends the a big budget kids movie from disney and it's like that's a big risk to spend the first 30 minutes practically like with no dialogue like mm-hmm. no talking Mm-hmm. And there hardly ever any talking in the whole movie, really. Um, something that this director, something that's very important to him, and he was talking about this. The first movie he directed was Finding Nemo, um, but Ooh. he was talking about this. The uh, something that he really tries to do in his movie is he doesn't want it to be direct. He he thinks that it becomes a lot more interesting. When instead of giving somebody four, you give them two plus two. <laughs> you involve the audience into solving the problems. You don't give them direct answers. You mm-hmm. let them fill in the blank. Hmm. Because our, our, our mind just wants to naturally do those things. Like, you can't help but read something, right? If there's a sign over, over to the side by you and you look at it, your brain's going to read it. It's already learned how it you can't tell it to not do it. It's going to do it. Or if you see like it, like why do why is Wheel of Fortune been going on like that show Wheel of Fortune been going on for like 40 years or I don't know how long but forever. We love that. We love filling in the blanks. And so that's something that he really likes to do. So yeah, I guess he wouldn't be a modern movie. He <clears throat> likes to he wants you to fill it in. He's the those directors and those writers and uh, those animators and everybody that was working on that is making you feel things without telling you how to feel it right how he's, to feel it yeah he's putting emotion into a cockroach and a robot that doesn't have a face has lenses for eyes yet it's conveying a message to us or at least i'm putting meaning into it right i'm doing i'm solving the math for him he's doing the two plus two and i'm putting the meaning to it um and saying oh yeah that's four. Oh yeah he feels sad oh yeah wally feels hopeful oh yeah wally feels lonely it never says he feels lonely <laughs> i filled in those blanks mm-hmm. um so and the music and everything does a uh, this is a major part of of that i mean music is mood in in uh movies like and the music is is fantastic it's really good like there is there's some music in there it's like oh wow i forgot about the music in this this sounds really nice mm. um and i don't personally love the the musical that wally likes or at least i should probably give it another shot it's called hello dolly like my mom like made me watch it it's a musical that she likes uh, she made me. She made us watch it after we watched Wally. She's like, "Oh, we'll, <laughs> you gotta watch this classic musical." And I thought mm. it was boring, but I'll have to give it another <laughs> shot. But the timing and everything of the, like it just keeps using music from that. It just feels so emotional and and raw and just good. Mm. Like the, it's really really well. Like this movie, interestingly enough was i don't think it won but it was nominated for the oscar for uh best script or whatever and you think like like somebody's first reaction might be script there's all they say is like wally eva like they they hardly hardly any words how is there how is there this much writing and all that like how could that be worthy of being regarded as one of the best Mm -hmm. right because there's hardly any words in it how's there a script or how is there a worthwhile script? Hmm. But what I saw, like I saw somebody who 
was writing an article about this. They were looking at the script and it'll say like beep, like it'll say like beep in parentheses. And then they'll write like everything that that beep is supposed to mean in that. Like, yeah, uh, like they like they are just like very meticulously planning out the emotions and every or the emotions that it's supposed to convey and good luck to the animators the animators did a great job and the director did a great job because i mean they they succeeded in yeah. making a, an extremely emotional movie if you sit down and give it the time and day to to speak to you like that yeah hmm. it's it's a very rewarding experience i think to to let a movie speak to you through its visuals, through its sound, through like little details, rather than just tell you yeah. how to feel, right? Mm -hmm. I think it makes it more powerful. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what something that sets this movie apart from others um, and why a lot of people really like it and feel very strong even 13 years after it, it came out. I think, I think you did, like you entered, you answered, um the the question about the music and sound editing where it gives us some sort of structural shape um i think you hit it right on the nail like me personally like i i appreciate um the music elements of films because a lot of time we tend to neglect it right um and yeah a lot of time it's just subconscious subconscious like you're not even actively thinking about it but thinking then when you hear it. it again you're like it brings back all these memories and memories. It brings back these feelings that mm -hmm. you felt when you're watching them. No, you watch it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really why I've learned to appreciate the music behind um, the films. In conclusion, what will you also hope for parents, teachers, and other viewers um, to get out of this film if they decide to to watch it. Um, so, I mean, you got two parallels in this movie, mm. and you you spend the first thirty to forty minutes. I don't know how much it is with Wally isolated by himself. It's very. It's a lot quieter part of the movie. Um, it's, he's just, his daily, his daily tasks, I would think they, they seem very repetitive. Um, they're, they're chore-like, um, but maybe they're meditative as well. Like he's, he spends every day making these cubes of trash hmm. and then he follows his path and he just starts stacking. Like he just starts making a skyscraper full of these cubes of trash. Hmm. So he does every day. Um, and he finds his treasures and different things. Um, and he's content with it. I feel like when you are in a form of lament, when you are in that state, you're not, it feels like a very sad thing, but I don't think you feel sad. Like, I don't think it's like a bad thing usually. Lamentation, I don't think is usually used in a negative sense it's more of like a meditative meditative state of like i think of like a monk like yeah who's, yeah who's very quiet who's just very reflective um and uh that, that's what i'm so i you you can definitely make parallels of wally being in a very lamentous state through a lot of the beginnings of the movie and then the then they go to the spaceship and that is a uh, very different story is a lot of chaos it's um it's organized chaos everybody is exactly where they need to be there's just like a million robots and million chairs just flying around it's very precise and just wally being there messes everything up <laughs> and so um there's there's a sense of there's a society there built on greed a society there um, built on capitalism, a society built on just, uh, there's a disconnect in that society. They, they, what they value, there's, there's no sense of reflection there. They're not, they don't ever reflect on their own thoughts. They don't even have to think. They're told to what to buy, they're told to what to wear, they're told to what to 
play and what to enjoy. Um, and so there's no lamentation at all. There's no lamenting at all um, in, in that society. And Wally's presence and Wally's mission gets people to flip that and to start thinking. There's a part of the movie where he he decides he's like, no, we need to go back to Earth. And the computer's like, we're not, I can't do that. And he's like, well, I'm going to do it anyways. And then the computer takes over the ship and locks him away in darkness in the ship. And he has to sit there and think and reflect. And that's probably the first time a human sits and reflects and sits in silence and sits in sadness and despair um, in like hundreds of years in, in this movie. And so um, out of that, he comes up with a plan that helps saves the day. So um, I think their um, lament, lament can be a powerful tool. It can be a powerful tool, and but but it is it's kind of scary. It, it's not something that probably a lot of people are comfortable with. We True. don't like embracing sad sad things. We don't like we're like oh. And I used to have this philosophy like in college. Um, I used to think a lot like why would you waste time being sad? Mm-hmm. And then I watched another Pixar movie, Inside Out. Okay. Have you seen that movie? No, I have not. Okay, you gotta see it. All right. We can talk about it. That is probably one of the most important movies I've seen. I don't like it better than Wally, but it's one of the most important movies that I've seen because it helped uh, put words and put it helped me contextualize why sadness could be important, why uh, some people are sad, and why there's value in in that. Because um, yeah, before it was and it, I. You have to see it. It's a very I I consider it one of the most important movies that I ever uh, have seen because it really helped me be better at relationships Hmm. and not just like spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, that sort of thing. I'm talking about just understanding people. It helped me understand and connect uh, with people a little bit better and um, help me help people a little bit better because sadness is part of our life. It's a human thing. And so being ans- it helped me really answer the question of why, what's the point of being sad? Hmm. And so lament, uh, lamentation, like there's a point in kind of meditating and being in that solemn, in that, uh, that state of reflection. Um, but yeah, that'd be hard to do in a, in a very busy landscape of, of greed and, mm-hmm. and, things to do so then sometimes so that i that's a good reminder to um to take some time during our days to just sit and and dwell in the moment right the moment. yeah Instead of just be busy 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 you said it you said it you, you were like while he goes into this space where there's all these robots moving around him mm-hmm. he just messes everything up like that is so yeah just by being there just by it. being there um, like <laughs> what <laughs> like is this harmless <laughs> um i don't know how harmless um while he is but mentally you might you might see him as this harmless robot outwardly but internally like I remind oh, yeah. me of Jesus. All right, so the the second question you asked me was what what like takeaways or anything that you want kids or parents or whoever is watching uh, Wally to to get from it, right? Like what message, what theme? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I I hope they pick up on some envir- uh, some of the environmental themes because that is like an extreme major concern that I have for the future Mm. of just taking care of our earth and Mm. just the outlook of our earth. And if we continue doing our things, I, uh, it makes perfect sense to me that we won't have a habitable earth if we continue to, to abuse it like we've been doing. Mm. Um, so I hope that, that it inspires them that, 
but I also just really hope that they get a that they connect with a sense of awe and a sense of wonder and a sense of love like I talked about like the theme that I that I kept um, going back to was like this is the best love story I've ever seen on a, in a movie and I'm not talking about passionate love but love in the sense of uh, just pure love of life and just love of belonging and love of connection things like that so um, I think if if everybody goes through life with a with a mindset of mind mindfulness and this is easier said than done but at least attempts to right because it's it's and this is something like you've been trying to do like being mindful of water or being mindful of the food of your food and the journey that it took to get to you um Mm -hmm. if we have a sense of mindfulness we just treat people better i think there is meaning and i think you can create meaning if you are living life like that Mm -hmm. and it's just going to happen naturally Mm -hmm. not being mindful of oh i'm going to help somebody today but Mm -hmm. being mindful of just your love of life and just the amazing things in it and it's gonna happen naturally it's not gonna happen because you think oh it's the right thing to do you're just gonna do it because that's just within your nature it's reconnecting with your nature Mm -hmm. way back i'm connecting it back again like you said you said a disconnect with the nature of love a reconnection with the nature of love that's what i hope that they get out of this movie is i hope they reconnect with the nature of love like yeah. I, when i hear reconnection i hear walking to the nature of love um what if you're moving as a turtle that's okay <laughs> it's in the right direction it's in the right direction <laughs> oh man that was that was good well jeremy um Thank you very much for creating the time out of your day to reflect on this film with me, um, with the viewers that will hopefully um, listen to the wisdom that you were able to project, not just through this film, but also out of this film too as well. Hopefully, um, it will definitely create a space where people will be able to um, go on with their life and continue the power of dialogue because a lot of time i think we have became this quick mentality of short conversations or i'm going to avoid you because you made me upset something like that but we need to go back to dialogue and uh, dialogue. dialogue is amazing it's powerful dialogue heals it heals for sure if done correctly it can heal mm-hmm. yeah. thank you what is this i think it's not the real microphone i don't have this fur thing here it's fluffy what is love Hmm, when you love somebody. It's a thing that comes from your heart. Like when you hug someone or kiss someone. And you can do nice things to them. Like you love your mommy. What does it feel like to love Like so happy. It's when you meet someone and then you really like them and then you like love them. You love to love them because you love to. Well, not everybody, but I do love people. It makes you feel so good. It's so important because you really just love people no matter what, and you love them forever, and that's why.